Can you hear me? No? Okay, uh... What about now? Okay, cool. I have a question for you. Do you enjoy going to concerts or festivals or do you enjoy listening to some loud music? If so, I might have some bad news for you. You, like many other people, might suffer from hearing loss. According to the US Center for Disease Control, over 25% of adult Americans suffer from noise-induced hearing loss. Of course, a majority of these cases is not very dramatic. However, over 360 million people worldwide suffer from disabling hearing impairments. In dramatic cases, we provide affected people with hearing aids or auditory or cochlear implants. Using cochlear implants, however, patients often can only distinguish between 10 different tones in total. As a consequence, users suffer from poor comprehensions of speech in noisy environments and also are not able to appreciate music. However, new emerging technology might finally change this. This technology is called optogenetics and it's currently trending in all kinds of different fields of biomedical research. In fact, optogenetics might result in the production of implants for which patients will be able to hear better than healthy persons. But what exactly is optogenetics and how can we use it to cure hearing loss? My name is Gil Steinig and today we talk about optogenetics, a new scientific discipline for which we might be able to cure all kinds of different neuronal diseases. Before we start, this video is part of our neuroscience series. So we've already discussed Alzheimer's in several videos and also multiple sclerosis. So make sure to check out these videos as well if you haven't done so, as there is a lot of research going on in both of these fields. So let's start by talking about how people are actually able to hear their environments. As you all know, we hear using our ears, which comprise of the outer, the middle and the inner ear. What now happens is that sound reaches our ear and travels in waves through the ear canal, which is part of the outer ear. Here it causes the eardrum to vibrate, which on the other hand leads to the movement of tiny bones in the middle ear. The last of these bones taps on the membrane window of the spiral-shaped cochlea. The cochlea is part of the inner ear and now something very interesting happens. You see, we find fluids in the inner ear which now start to move and bend tiny hair cells. And these tiny hair cells generate electrical impulses. Depending on which hair cells are bent, we generate characteristic electrical nerve impulses which correspond to certain tones. And this is the key step of our hearing. Through the production of electrical impulses by our hair cells, our brain receives signals from the auditory nerve. Okay, so hearing fundamentally means that we convert sound waves into specific electrical impulses in the inner ear. Hearing impairments now most results from dysfunctions in this process, meaning that hair cells do not work properly. In this regard, we know four major causes. First of all, humans might be born with mutations, which disrupt the function of inner hair cells. The mechanism from which electrical impulses are generated is very complex and many genes are involved. If one of these genes is inactive or doesn't work properly anymore, then hereditary deafness is mostly the result. Furthermore, we can also directly lose the number of hair cells in our inner ear. As a consequence of this loss, our brain receives less and less diverse signals, leading to a decreased hearing ability. There are different reasons why we might lose our hair cells, and it is quite surprising, but the extensive use of drugs such as aspirin might contribute towards this loss. However, this effect is rather small. Indeed, we mostly lose our hair cells through the long exposure to loud noises. So if we go to nightclubs or festivals, DJs actually kill our hair cells. A third reason of why we might experience hearing loss is the loss of synapses. In this case, we talk about synapses, which are the connections between hair cells and adjacent nerve cells. If we lose these connections, then our brain receives less and poorer information from the air. However, this kind of hearing loss does often not affect the ability of a person to hear quiet noises and therefore we also call it hidden hearing loss. Lastly, also center signaling processing might become worse with age. There are some mechanisms for which our central nervous system might change over time, however the exact processes are still debated. Okay, so now we know that there are different causes of hearing loss and most of them seem to involve impairments in inner hair cells. Most hearing implants now exactly act here. Cochlear implants, for example, comprise of two different components. 
An external sound processor detects specific sound waves, which then leads to the production of electrical signals by an internal electrode. Depending on the sound, the electrode stimulates different neurons in the inner ear, leading to the recognition of different tones. However, the number of possible signals an electrode can produce is strongly limited, and therefore we need new technologies. And here, optogenetics comes into play. Optogenetics is a new scientific discipline in which we manipulate neurons by introducing certain genes into them. We normally deliver these genes for viruses and they lead to the production of optogenetic actuators or sensors. A very famous example here are genes which lead to the production of so-called opsins. Opsins are membrane-bound proteins which incorporate small retinal molecules to become light receptors. After being stimulated by light, opsins undergo structural changes which then leads to the production of electrical impulses. We often find opsins in nature, for example they enable our vision as they are part of our rods and cones. The main principle of optogenetics is to transfer genes into neurons of living animals to make them produce opsins. We then use a light source to stimulate these neurons, and in this manner we can control when exactly we want to activate neurons. And this technology can potentially be used to cure depression, anxiety disorders, but also Alzheimer's or hearing loss. Okay, so now we come to today's major study. Optogenetics has been used last year for the first time to cure deaf animals. Here a virus carrying channel rhodopsin, which is a form of opsin, was injected into the cochlea of deaf gerbils. Then the scientists transplanted optical fibers to give off light within the cochlea. Then the optical fibers illuminated light and these gerbils started to show behavior similar to being exposed to sound. This is the first indication that optogenetics might be used to cure hearing loss, but the scientists didn't stop here. In another experiment, they tested their technology in gerbils which have lost their ability to hear during adulthood. You see, prior to hearing loss, these animals have been trained to cross a compartment in a box after being stimulated with a certain sound. So once again, channel rhodopsin and optical fibers were introduced into the cochlea of these now deaf animals. Interestingly, the investigated gerbils started to cross the compartment once the light source was activated. This means that they responded very similar to light to how they responded when they were able to hear sounds. As a consequence, the auditory pathways of these animals have been successfully stimulated, meaning that they somewhat regained the ability to hear. Although a lot of basic research is currently conducted in the fields of optogenetics, a lot of challenges remain. Similar to what we've discussed in this video here, where we try to find cures for cystic fibrosis, we also conduct gene therapy here. This means that we want to use viruses in order to introduce genes into neurons of the inner ear. This means that we need to develop more efficient methods to do so, but they also need to have very high safety standards. Additionally, we are currently struggling with toxicity, which might occur if a lot of channel rhodopsin is activated in one neuron. We therefore also need to engineer opsins in order to make them safer for the cells themselves. Last but not least, we also need to further develop our light sources. This means, for example, that we need to produce strips of very small LED lights in order to only locally activate neurons. So you see that there are actually a lot of challenges remaining in this field of research. Nevertheless, with this technology, we can try to make new hearing implants for which our patients are finally able to appreciate music. So if you're interested in these or similar topics, let me know in the comment section and leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe, meaning hitting this button here first and then also this button in order to stay informed about the greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.